Mr. Casey Panella. Yes. Do we have proof of notice? Or proof of notice, yes, here. Okay, perfect. And tonight's special board meeting is um, on the topic of the um, century link, the termination of PRISM on December 30, or I'm sorry, on uh, March 31st, as well as the um, ad hoc committee's efforts to address both short-term and long-term options that we're going to be discussing with the group tonight. So um, at this time, I'm gonna ask the general manager if there were resident comments on the agenda topics. Yes, we do have resident comments on the agenda topic. Okay, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, somebody's, somebody's yes. phone is ringing. Yeah, there's a, a dial tone. We all hear. So either someone needs to mute or realize they're making a uh, pocket phone call. Okay, so Casey, why don't you get okay. started with the um, resident comments, please? Okay, wonderful. Uh, the first one is from Bob and Carrie Sykes. We've not learned, have we not learned our lesson regarding long term contracts and Vera CenturyLink? Seeing that we are currently facing negative consequences from a huge debacle with the CenturyLink contract over cable TV. We don't think it is wise to enter into a long-term contract Comcast proposal since every household does not require internet access. And the best thing to do at this point is to either negotiate a better price and or speed for internet only or finish out the contract at the internet only price. It is never wise to make a long-term decision when desperation is involved. And that's what we feel like is happening at this point, let the residents decide how much they want to pay for television instead of forcing 100% participation. Not everyone wants, needs the same level of television service. Please do not put this community into another situation that we are already suffering through. Streaming television is the best overall option for the community at this time. Yes, there will be learning curve, but together as a community, we will get through it. You and the board work for the best interests of the residents. Your interest should not be to the rewards of a finder's fee. Okay. Next one, Chris and Jack Clint. Uh, please do not let the vote happen on cable internet options until we all have the data letting us know pricing for the options. I've also heard that first service residential is getting a percentage of the kickback and I do not think they should. They have just started working for us and knew that this was going to happen. This should have been part of the bargaining to employ them, not a bonus as they start working for us. Next one, Anita Zanferdino. I feel the board should not vote on the Comcast at this time at this rushed meeting on Tuesday. This is very important item that should not be handled right away. I have spoken to a lot of people and they have, or they will be very disheartened if the board votes on Comcast at Tuesday's meeting. Benjamin Lusk, if Comcast does not offer one gig internet, then it should not be considered internet speed and ability to work from home is crucial consideration. Also, it is common knowledge that Comcast throttles internet speeds during peak usage and has uh, a, abysmal customer service, whereas CenturyLink has dedicated service lines. Next one, Teresa Gleason, what happened to direct TV that could be done in three weeks? We all still keep CenturyLink and it would only be $15 more a month. How much is it going to cost all of us? We need more input from the whole community. Steven Slingluff, um, Good morning, this email is regarding the attempt to push through Comcast bulk um, internet 
proposal, I feel this is being done with a total lack of transparency and resident input. We don't even know what we would be getting. Slow down. The survey was a joke. How can we make an informed decision without information? Let's please review our options openly with the information and make sure we are going, uh, doing what's best for Sandoval and the residents. Jean Clement, I would ask you not to make a decision on our TV internet until we, the homeowners, have had all the information for internet speed, cost, bundle, who owns the existing cable lines, and can another company use what we currently have or current have? These are valid questions that should be addressed before decisions made. I believe if we had this information going into the survey, we would have been able to make an informed decision. I think I mentioned Glean Clement or Jean Clement. And we have um, I don't have a name on this one. Just gonna see if it I'm just asking for it to uh, Okay. No rush is basically another one asking. Richard Hernandez, Casey, I would like you to read this to the board during the next board meeting. Please do not make a decision on a provider for internet or cable until all the pertinent information is presented to all the homeowners in Sandoval community. Frank Civitillo. It is our opinion that the board of directors of the Sandoval Homeowners Association delay contracting with any bulk TV internet contractor until more information has been collected and shared with homeowners to make informed decisions. Gail Tubb, uh, Tubb. Many of feel that a decision about cable and TV is being made too quickly. The survey that was sent out to the homeowners lacks sufficient information that would enable residents to make an educated decision. I feel that any decision should be postponed until after the election when the newly seated board members have an opportunity to participate in that decision that will have a huge impact on the Sandoval community. Some homeowners that filled out the survey have, survey have no idea what streaming is or how to go about using it. Homeowners can make an educated decision when they in fact understand the choices brought before them. Very few people even watch the stream board of director meetings. So when given the choices in that survey, they would go with familiar because the bulk package is what they know. Please give the community a chance to be educated about the choices and the three new board members to participate so that they can be held responsible for a decision that, so they can't be held responsible for a decision that they had no input on. Wouldn't that be real transparency to the community? Ron Lissick, I know that you did a resident survey and that it looks like a bulk contract with Comcast is a winner. However, when we voted, we did not have all the facts since then. We have learned some very interesting things with these facts in mind. We would no longer vote for Comcast bulk agreement, and there might be many other residents that would change their vote. Therefore, we are asking you not to make a decision tonight, but rather to wait and inform all the residents about the options and what they might cost. We were never given this information at the last board meeting. Please do not get us into a seven year contract that will go up 4% each year and give us an adequate service. This is not a good vote for the betterment of the community. And it does not seem that you will keep to your fiduciary responsibility. You don't need to rush into a decision tonight, but you do need to educate the residents about all of the options. Bob Gierger, please not Comcast. Once was enough, let the new board decide. And with this one, because it's a lengthy one, I'm going to go ahead and set the timer at this time. As per the uh, regular meetings, uh, we'll allot three minutes time. For the benefit of the residents, and especially the non-techie residents among us, would you please read the following message below? that is currently circulating within Sandoval and ask the board to briefly address each of the issues, bullets. Uh, thanks very much. This is Marge and Jack. 
According to the survey, the association now pays CenturyLink $56.50 per door per month for our bulk TV internet package. The survey claims that these same services are expected to cost $205.54 per home without a bulk bundle service rate contract in place. But alas, a bulk contract is available for $74 slash month. The quoted prices were extracted from a proposal submitted by CenturyLink, but the survey fails to disclose the following. Comcast demands a seven-year contract using an obsolete technology, co coaxial cable. How can that position Sandoval for the future when the industry is clearly headed away from cable and towards streaming? Will Comcast even be in business seven long years from now? Comcast requires 100% participation, meaning that any resident who prefers TV service tailored to their family's needs and budget will need to purchase it from the third party vendors with no reduction of base assessments. The survey extols Comcast's bulk price of $73.95 slash month, but Comcast's proposal warns that this is 2020 pricing, which is only valid through March, 2021. If Comcast exercises its proposed right to increase its bulk price by 4% annually starting in April, its price will start at 76.90 and go to 79.97 in the second year and climb to 96.75 in the final year of the contract. In the second year of the contract, Sandoval would be paying Comcast 401,337 year more than we are paying CenturyLink. The hit to our budget would soar to 685,197 in the last year of the contract. This would tr trigger dollar for dollar assessment increases. Why? Because as of March 31st, San Sandoval will need every dime to of assessments collected at the current 600 quarter rate to cover spending already baked into our budget. And we will no longer have the telecommunications plus to dip into the sidestep assessment increases. Comcast claims that its non-bulk retail rate is 20554 a month, and the survey cleverly implies that absent a bulk contract, Sandoval would be paying that bloated sum, but that erroneously assumes that it left to their own devices, our residents would be, and at that time, the three minutes has passed. Next one, Lori Bernard to the board. Thank you for sending the results of the survey, which indicated 73.3% of the responses supported bulk and internet, bulk internet and TV. Unfortunately, I do not believe we were given enough information in regards to the type of service, services which would be provided nor all the financial ramifications of choosing CenturyLink versus a Comcast provider. The community has recently been sent quite a bit of information by concerned residents, but nothing from the board from whom we should be getting this information. It is for this reason I am asking that no decision be made to go ahead with negotiations. All uh, pertinent information until, until pertinent information is given to the residents. That was Lori Bernard. Next one, Marlene Fourier. I know that you did a survey, a residence survey, and that it looks like a bulk contract with Comcast is the winner. However, no. when we voted for one of the choices, we did not have all of the facts since then. We have learned some very interesting things with these facts in mind. We would no longer vote for Comcast bulk agreement, and there might be many other residents that would change their vote. Therefore, we are asking you not make a decision tonight, but rather to wait and inform the residents about all of our options and what they might cost. We we're never given this information at the board meeting. Please do not get us into a seven year contract that will go up 4% a year and give us inadequate service. This is not a good vote for the betterment of the community. It doesn't seem that the board will keep their fiduciary responsibility. You don't need to rush into decisions tonight, but you need to educate them. Marlene Poirier. Debbie Ott, I strongly request that the board doesn't make any hasty decision on a new cable contract. As of 331, 2021, it sounds like the residents will have to find a temporary streaming service as there's not enough time to find a provider 
by March 31st, 2021. During this blackout time, the board should find a new provider to meet all of our needs. It sounds like Comcast could uh, use coaxial cables rather than fiber optics. Why go back to the old technology? Just because First Residential Service has a working relationship with Comcast doesn't mean that Comcast would provide the best service and prices to the resident. It sounds like Comcast only guarantees the rate for one year and when, uh, and then we would have a rate increase with the number of homes in our community. I would think we would have more negotiation strength. As the committee looked at other cable providers other than Comcast, please share those details with residents. Pam Lipper, I am concerned. I'm just gonna move this over here in just a sec. There we go. Uh, Pam Lipper, I am concerned that the survey we responded to was lacking enough information to give adequate consideration to technology many of us don't understand. Since the survey, much more information has come forward that really needs to be considered. Our community is full of young, technology-driven people, and taking us backward to old technology is hardly in anyone's best interest. The issue needs more time to be explored so we all understand the ramifications of any decision. This decision needs to wait two weeks until the new board is seated. That was Pam Lippert, if I didn't mention that before. Charlie Ponzo. I wish to express my thoughts on the CenturyLink issue. I believe it is in the best interest of our community to pause and do further investigation into all possible avenues of solution. We currently have CenturyLink in a very uh, tenable situation, breaking our contract. It is not wise to rush into anything that removes our negotiating power with them. Can't let them off the hook easy. My question to the board is, why can't we wait? Fear is no reason to rush, and a fiduciary responsibility is a good reason to pause. Um, this next one is Francis McKinnon to all member uh, members of the board. I know you did a residential survey and that it looks like a bulk contract with Comcast is the winner. However, when we voted, we did not have all the facts. Since then, we have learned so very interesting, some very interesting things. With these facts in mind, we would no longer vote for the contract of bulk Comcast. And as for now, many residents would change their votes. Therefore, I'm asking you to, to do the same decision. Make. Therefore, I'm asking that you do not make a decision tonight. Please wait so that the residents of Sandoval are aware of all of their options and cost. We were not given the new information at the last meeting. Please don't get us into a seven-year contract that will go up 4% each year and give us inadequate service. This wouldn't be a good vote to better the community. And it appears that uh, this would not keeping fiduciary responsibilities. You don't have to make a rush decision tonight. You can need, you need to inform and educate the residents of all the options. Please don't vote this evening. Um, and the next one is Lee Brawl. Because the decision will end up being a financial one, as well as service and quality for the TV solution. Will the residents be able to vote on the solution and given all the detail, costs and service limits to produce a real vote? Even though a bulk agreement may be an overall good deal because it may seem to be the easiest and quickest resolve, it doesn't mean that the residents can all afford an increase after we just had one and then a gradual increase due to the potential contract or however it's set up. Just because a survey says most people want a bulk agreement, if that bulk agreement adds another $20 a month this year, but then goes to 30 a month, et cetera, the survey result will look different. You may be pricing people out and see People move out of Sandoval. This is not good timing to increase costs with a pandemic, people out of jobs and financial crisis. What is best is probably for each household to determine as they know where they are financially instead of trying to apply something that can harm the future of Sandoval residents. If the costs aren't the same as we are currently under, 
the exact details need to be made available to every resident so we can decide. Confirm this before any decision and when this is and when this will be available. If not, please explain why. Thank you. Next one, Francis McKinnon. This is identical to the other ones that I've read verbatim. So um, I'm not gonna reread it. It's identical to the survey. I know you did the survey. Please don't get us into a seven year contract. This would be, um, and the uh, um, accusations of fiduciary responsibility. We're gonna go to Mary Jo Chevalier. I just, um, let's see. I changed my mind regarding Comcast. I would prefer we kept CenturyLink for internet and use and use YouTube for streaming my TVs. Thank you. Ed Vizzola, um, based on the results of the community survey, just wanted to provide some points that may not have been mentioned as of yet. Regardless of which provider is chosen, will they provide us with a dedicated customer service number? I only mention this as Comcast Xfinity is notoriously awful. What will be the plan once the CenturyLink internet contract is over in two to three years? Will the TV service provider take over or extend CenturyLink? What is the likelihood that CenturyLink would negotiate a long-term deal for higher speed internet? Their website only offers 100 uh, megabytes, gigabytes above contracted 40 megabytes at a reduced fee to avoid legal consequences of breaking their contract. As I'm proofreading this, okay, that was an extra side note. Uh, the next one, Charles and Linda Duclos. Um, We should not be rushing into it, signing anything with Comcast. They are a greedy company and their service is extremely poor. Never mind their outrageous cost. What is the hurry just because we have just a month or so left before they shut us out off does not mean we should be encouraging anyone to sign a contract till the residents have more information and more answers than other than Comcast. I do not want Comcast. Never been more disappointed. Peter Kurowski, the options presented for bulk packaging of internet cable TV survey that was taken in Santa Bar was very broad in scope. This, sur this survey should not be taken as resident acceptance of any one provider. 79% of the households favor a bulk HOA paid package. This alone should not allow the board to select the final provider. As I recall from the meeting where options were presented, Comcast had a costly package with annual price escalation clauses, as well as requiring Sandoval being in a long-term contract. The other bulk quote reviewed was CenturyLink providing an improved higher speed internet along with a direct TV package from their partner company with two dishes strategically placed in our community. Cost was about 75 total for the both and the internet and TV. I suggest a quick survey should be taken showing all pricing for each bulk package and specifically what it includes as well as terms of contract and any commissions to third parties paid before a final decisions made. Next one, Noreen Boise. We are writing to you in regards to the bulk cable contract that we believe the Sandoval HOA board is considering and that you apparently are encouraging. We are not in favor of our HOA board entering into a contract with Comcast on our behalf. We would also appreciate it if the board could be more transparent in the future. We all need to know what's going on. Please know that we do not require a fully, okay. David um, Polishak. And as a resident of Sandoval, we take keen interest in our chosen community. 
the pending termination of PRISM television service concerns us greatly. As you deliberate the choices available, please ensure that Sandoval employs the most modern state of art technology available. With so many residents needing high speed internet for work, school and pleasure, please do not return to an antique antiquated technology. We need reliable high speed internet that will satisfy the needs of all households. With regards to television service, it is apparent that resident opinions are numerous and varied. Keep in mind that a grand selling point has been the amenities included in our basic HOA fees. If a comparable bulk service ar agreement cannot, sorry, arrangement cannot be obtained, consideration must be given to lowering a portion of the HOA fees in order for the residents to secure service individually. Brenda Zell, we have been a resident, we have been residents of Sandoval since 2006 and have never seen such a board with absolute transparency. When the survey was sent out, the telecommunications, we were not provided the whole truth. And of course, the board received a high percentage of residents wanting Comcast. Now that the information is known, it is time for the board to listen to the residents and table this until non-bulk options have been given adequate. John O'Brien, I'm writing this to affirm my strong objection to being forced to accept inferior technology and service of Comcast. We experience with Comcast in the past was horrendous. And I could not wait to switch from using them. Our CenturyLink internet is for the most part very good. And we currently stream various programming on our smart TVs with great success. My vote is resounding no to Comcast and some of the more knowledgeable voices in the community who have already weighed in on this should be listening to. I prefer to keep CenturyLink internet and get reduced rate to due to their breach of contract by halting TV service and homeowners getting a streaming service of their choice, getting any bundled cable patch package using uh, coaxial cable will be a costly error. That will be hard to undo no matter what Comcast sales presentation will look like. I can assure you it will no way resemble the product if we make the mistake in getting it. Keep CenturyLink's fiber optic and let the residents obtain their own streaming services. Christine Betchel, a lot of resident, oh, I'm sorry, a lot of people are expressing great concern and fear that we might be locked into a contract with Comcast because of a deal that has allegedly, it's a good word, already been signed. Is this the case? Another concern is that the community survey did not have enough information about cost in it for homeowners to base their decision on. Can a second survey with more info be sent out? Gail Lopez, reaching out in regards to the cable and TV situation that is in the agenda for February 16th, 2021 board meeting. This is a very big decision, I think, before we go ahead and decide what we're going to do, much more information has been given to the homeowners and the community. Let's not rush this. We need facts before we sign contracts. Thank you for bringing this to the Kathy Chaplin. And that is a repeat based off of a previous email, uh, copy paste I already read, Marge and Jack Nixon. So. We will move on. Um, let's see. Craig um, Dunleavy, the recent uh, survey regarding the community TV internet service was misleading, withheld specific pertinent information and potential services offered, the lack of trans. This is the same one as well. I don't want to not, I feel like I'm at this point kind of reading almost the same. So just in case, I was also learned that Comcast is the provider that you and the board president are trying to move forward with. Yeah, no, that's okay. A survey is an investigative means of a 
obtaining the opinions of those being surveyed and not an approval to move forward, committing to any contract, much less, much less one with Comcast who uses um, antique, yeah, this is similar to other ones, equipment is unre unreliable and wanting a seven year contract plus 4% annual escalations, this is all similar to the previous email. Another concerning matter is that there was not a mention of first service receiving almost 60,000 by entering into a, a Comcast contract with what appears to be a backdoor deal is shameful and certainly not in the best interests of the community. With the new board about to be voted in, the task of obtaining all TV internet options to be shared with the community should be their responsibility and not rush into <clears throat> with an outgoing board. Okay. Just a few more. This one's a little longer. Um, as you no doubt know, uh, okay. I think that's a, okay. While the survey showed a clear preference for the HOA to host and pay for a cable and internet solution, we need much more information. It clearly said nothing about the HOA would pay for additional service, and I suspect answers would change the cost are to be paid in the form of increased HOA dues. Um, Something pertaining to a post that I've, I've not seen. Uh, we need to know what CenturyLink will charge to upgrade our internet speed to 100 megabytes. Um, and, and I hope I'm saying that. And what do we reasonably need in order to stream and use internet at the same time on three or four devices more than um, megabytes? What is the current cost of the same in bulk contract? Is more wiring needed to jump to a faster speed? How long would it take to go to that higher speed? Flip a switch and add more infrastructure. There are so many different opinions and wants in this community. I expect you will conclude you need to guarantee very robust internet and leave TV to the individual choice of payment. I know there are a lot of grief when everyone has their own opinion, um, but I would beg you to remember, do not daily, not daily, you barely have enough time to get answers and reach decisions. Uh, dally, sorry, do not dally, missed that one. You barely have enough time to get answers and reach decisions. If we get to the sunset of CenturyLink without a path clearly identified, you will not have a pleasant time facing members. Mm, almost. Mm. Huh. Okay, I have another question. I will address each and separately. Okay. And Deborah Burnett. In our opinion, it's not in the best interest of the community to engage in another cable television contract once the bulk agreement of uh, CenturyLink ends on 331 2021. First of all, cable television is becoming obsolete as evidenced by CenturyLink getting out of the cable television business. Streaming services are becoming increasingly popular and seem to be the way of the future. This, the service we have received from cable companies here in Sandoval has been less than desirable, whether it's CenturyLink or Comcast. CenturyLink's equipment is poor quality and certain hardware that was once replaced for free, such as a remote control, is now only replaced if the homeowners pay a fee for it. Is this a trend with all cable companies now? Also, cable television companies are losing some of their channels to the streaming services. One example is Reels Channel, which was removed from our CenturyLink cable lineup at the end and last year, and is now only available through Amazon Prime Video, Fire TV, or Roku. We propose that our community negotiate a bulk discount rate with CenturyLink to upgrade our internet speed. Then the individual homeowner could purchase their own streaming television service, which by and large does not require any contract and can be started 
stopped at any time. One example is YouTube TV, which offers 85 plus channels, including local channels for $64.99 a month and limited DVR service is also included. Um, Rick Devine, while I commend the survey, but once you attach pricing in the actual contract, I believe you would see a change of mind. I highly doubt anybody will support an increase. Unfortunately, Sandoval has a tradition of signing long-term contracts complete with gaining increases in costs to the residents. Five years in the technology world is a lifetime. Streaming is the future. Okay, we only have 35 more to go. Just kidding, I'm done. Hey, Casey, if I can interject here, um, I don't know what's going on here, frankly. Um, there was never a vote suggested Correct. or raised to me about any internet options tonight. And frankly, we've just spent 40 minutes arguing against a vote tonight that was never conveyed to me was even an option. It's my understanding that we're supposed to discuss some options tonight with the committee. No. And frankly, that is it. So where did this information come from? I don't know. I've only sensed a lot of fear from residents. So wherever it came from, whoever sent it out clearly was, you know, it's instilled fear. There's not anything that we've communicated management, a lot of the slander in there of management and the board, um, including myself, it's unnecessary. It's nothing that I'm aware of. What is there anyone on this board that was under the impression that we were gonna vote on a cable service provider tonight. It certainly wasn't my understanding. It was not mine. No, and no not at all. Then how did, did uh, management send out some information or something? I'm just really confused on what we're doing here tonight. We didn't even get to the topic yet. Exactly. The plan was as a follow-up, to the um, January 28th board meeting. At that time, it was discussed that a special meeting would be held prior to the February uh, monthly board meeting. We wouldn't wait till the end of February. We would provide updates. And specifically, we talked about doing a high level survey with yes or no answers to get a temperature check of the from the residents, number one. Number two, we talked about the ad hoc committee's efforts to identify some short term options to um, mm -hmm. residents can consider to um, choose prior to, or um, after the March 31st go dark when Prism is terminated. We're prepared to do that tonight. We also okay. have no contract on the table. We, we don't have a contract. All we have are preliminary information and proposal there's been no negotiations. So I agree with you. I don't know where this is coming from. We're prepared to talk about the um, long-term strategy, if you will. And then lastly, at the board meeting in January, you specifically asked what CenturyLink's plan to collect the um, PRISM equipment. So we do have that information and we, we're looking to share that with the, um, with the community tonight. And just to be clear in terms of my position that I could never vote on a service provider this evening. There is so much information that needs to be gathered in terms of the services offered by a litany of different providers, the technology looking towards the future. Homes are gonna be integrated with our security, our lights, our television. We need to consider all these options. So if, if anyone out there thinks that this is gonna be some haphazard vote for a, a provider, it's not gonna occur with me, I can tell you that. And I don't know how this has been suggested to the community, but I'd like to know how so many people have been, been conveyed this information because it's, it's doing us a major disservice. We have not even been able to talk yet about the different options on the table. Yes, there's a, there's a total misunderstanding, uh, and Kathy, you can, uh, enunciate this. There's a, a, a large misunderstanding that the uh, board resolution document that uh, Comcast would like the board to acknowledge in what no way makes any long term commitment to Comcast. It's not a, a contract with Comcast. It doesn't it doesn't in, indenture us to do anything. 
It simply says that Comcast can provide us detailed quotations. And oh, by the way, if you if you go with us, the door fee has to be shared. Yeah, and I would, confirmed I would, by I would, the attorneys. Yeah, so, and I would echo Ron's sentiment also that, you know, nowhere have I um, or would I ever even suggest or think about entering into any sort of vote tonight uh, for any uh, provider. And, you know, I think there was a lot of misinformation out there. And once again, the fake news of social media has done this community a huge disservice. Um, and too many people latched upon that cut and paste, whoever generated that, um, and spread throughout the community like wildfire. That's what's gonna cause your property values to go down and people not to wanna to move into this community. Not the board who is doing their job and doing their, uh, their fiduciary responsibility and doesn't need to be schooled or chastised by residents and neither does the general manager. And case in point, in the survey, it says right here, no, these options are not associated with any specific service provider or price. So I can guarantee you that I was not prepared tonight, nor will I vote on anything tonight. But I think the residents did a huge disservice to each other by spreading the misinformation and not even coming to myself and asking me what is out there, except the emails that I received that said they don't want Comcast, when Comcast was never on the table in this survey. So I echo probably a lot of the board and uh, general managers' uh, comments right now. And I am furious. Yeah. So, yeah. and I mean, more importantly, <laughs> go ahead, just, Melanie. Just really quick, you know, just real far as the survey goes, the whole thing of the survey was to be able to dig deeper and find out more information and get more detailed actual analysis and budgeting numbers around what services the community wants. It did not intentionally did not include vendors. It was a question of what does your family typically want? Does it want just the internet side? Do you want bulk? Do you want to be able to have TV and internet like we previously provided? It was an information gathering activity. It was not a vote. It was not a price quote. It was none of that. It was just to be able to gather information because we do feel like the community should have some input in this. And it's just extremely frustrating that uninformed people start spreading information and then we waste 45 minutes. Exactly. And also the discussions and the noise regarding this um, really detracts from the efforts of the ad hoc committee. I would like, Kathy, Kathy, could us? Go ahead, Bill. Go ahead, Bill. I would like, I would like to know how all these emails were quoting numbers and percentages, uh, like four, 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 four and a half percent per year. We did not even see those until four ten p.m. today. So how did they have that three days ago to be sending emails? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, again, in light of the January 28th board meeting and the ongoing preliminary exploration taken by the ad hoc committee, Steve Kaysons, the um, chairman, is with us here tonight. He spoke earlier. And um, the information that he referenced regarding the um, Comcast document that we did have, um, we presented it to our association's attorney to get an opinion to see if this is something of concern. So the question now, um, or the response came back saying that it simply acknowledges that Comcast and First Service Residential on a national level have a partnership arrangement, a partnership agreement. One of the reasons why we liked First Service uh, Residential was that they have bulk purchasing power. They can help us get a better price on things. Um, from a national perspective. So in this regard, the, um, the acknowledgement of the partnership says that if we do in fact sign a bulk service agreement with Comcast, Comcast is then um, uh, a ben uh, beneficiary, if you will, of, a, of the 25% of the door fee. 
These bulk service providers, some offer a door fee incentive to sign with them. And the rates, the rates change, the rates vary. In this case, Comcast specified in their preliminary uh, documentation, their proposal, that they would assess a door fee incentive to sign of which first service is entitled to 25% of that door fee. It's kind of like a consultant fee or um, like the 6% realtor's fee, a finder's fee. Um, and that's, and we basically were not locked in. It was a no harm, no foul. If we signed with Comcast under the partnership arrangement, we would be responsible for giving first service that 25% fee. It's not a kickback. There was no mention of the door fee and how the, the community would benefit. Um, I don't know. So let's let's get on with tonight's agenda. I want to talk a little. I don't know if we need to talk any further about the survey, but I think we should talk about some of the temporary options that um, the ad hoc committee has put together. We're looking to share information tomorrow, a matrix with the community that talks about some of these short-term um, temporary replacements in in light of the fact that. Century Prism is terminated on March 31st. So, Steve, I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay. As the liaison, but I'd like to introduce that, Steve. If that's all right, Kathy. Yeah, but let me just finish the agenda. What I'd like to do is talk. We'll go on now to the um, the short-term temporary replacement options. Then we'll talk about the vendor options, Al. And then we'll talk about the um, Century Link equipment pickup plan. Um, Casey and I will discuss um, at the end. Okay. All right, okay. go ahead. I'll turn it over to you, Al. All right. Um, at this time, I'd like to say that there has been no contract requested, negotiated, nor received. Correct. The ad hoc committee has been diligently working to provide this board with an accurate apples to apples comparison of the various internet, TV, and combination options that are available to Sandoval. We had a meeting last week, one last evening, and another one today. Just today, we were informed by First Services that two of the options we were considering are not available. Also, just received our pricing offers for increased internet speeds from our current provider, CenturyLink. So information is still coming in to us. One thing is certain, CenturyLink will no longer provide us with TV service as of March 31st. So if you desire TV service after March 31st, you will have to obtain it yourself. As Steve will explain, the committee has put together a matrix of many TV options that will be available to you to obtain on your own ranging from an inexpensive antenna for local channels to a streaming service. Such a service you would purchase monthly and receive it over the CenturyLink internet, which will remain, but hopefully at a greater speed. The committee has also presented the board with a matrix of bulk provider options and prices for the entire community, ranging from internet only to combined internet and TV packages. The goal of this committee is to provide this board and through this community and through them, this community with accurate, up to date information in a transparent manner. I thank this committee for their time and hard work. Okay, thank you, Al. You're up, Steve. Okay, my turn. Uh, coming out tomorrow will be a, uh, a compiled list of what I call the bridge options as uh, CenturyLink goes dark with PRISM the end of March. So what are we dealing with? Well, in the short run, uh, we're working as fast as we can as a committee to replace the PRISM TV service, as everybody has indicated. Uh, we have a long way to go. We're going to go out with RFPs and do the evaluations and then present that to the board and to the residents once we have more definitive information on all the vendors, and there are several. So I've assembled, as well as the ad hoc committee, a list 
of options that the residents can utilize to obtain some level of TV service at the end of March, should the bulk agreements still uh, be in work, which they will be. So here, here are a few notes on the little matrix that you'll see come out tomorrow. It's basically got three options. Option one is a standalone uh, TV antenna, cost about $27 from Amazon. I've plugged one in here, it works quite well. You get about 30 channels, including about three music channels if you want local live TV. Uh, option two, I give you a list of TV providers with basic service features. And these, these TV providers uh, are ones you've probably heard of. It's YouTube TV, Hulu, Philo, Fubo, Sling, and then there's also uh, Apple TV. I didn't list Apple because it was pretty expensive. So if you're already on Apple TV, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, the, the TV services all are in about the $64.99 per month uh, bucket. They offer around 85 channels <clears throat> or more. Uh, two of them do not offer live channels. So you're gonna have to use an antenna to pick up those live channels or another service. But most of the other ones, you can purchase a service that has live TV. Uh, option three, oh, the other thing is you can you can cancel those at any time. So if you don't like uh, YouTube TV, you can go to Fubal TV uh, and try them out. So there's no long-term contracts and you can cancel at any time. Option three takes advantage of the existing Comcast fiber coax distribution system uh, as an out, as we call it, an outside customer. Uh, yeah, that system is not dead. Uh, you can still call up Comcast and they'll gladly uh, sell you a service. And I've listed uh, the different basic extra and preferred services are available through Comcast. And uh, they can get you set up with that. Uh, there, there will be some one to two year contracts uh, to, to gain an incentive. Uh, Comcast changes their pricing almost daily. Uh, their managers look at <laughs> how many people in that area and that market are purchasing certain kinds of services and then they'll discount those services to try to pull up the uh, membership. So you basically got, got three options. You've got the antenna, if you just want live channels. You've got the streaming services, which rely on smart TVs, Fire Stick, or some other device that allows you to download an app for that particular uh, company. And then you run that app, log in with your username and password, and then you're on. And they give you all your channel options. A lot of those have sports packages and other packages for people with special interests. And uh, you're welcome to cruise all of those various uh, links that I have provided in the uh, spreadsheet. So that will be coming out to you, I understand, tomorrow. And if you have any questions, please forward them back through our general manager and we'll try to get them answered. Right. right. Thank you, Steve. Over now. Okay, so in the information that um, Steve and the ad hoc committee put together, it talks about the monthly price, it includes the number of channels, whether or not live local channels are included, um, also the DVR um, capabilities. Some of these are offering a free trial. You might want to explore them now before March 31st to see what may work or what you're comfortable with. And um, within the community, I know that there are a number of people that are using the live streaming, and I'm hoping that some of these people will make their services available to help some of the other residents if they wanna set something up. Um, and maybe they can notify the, um, the uh, general manager if they're looking to help people. Um, we can get a short list of volunteers that would be willing to help others set up um, streaming services if that's the choice they wanna make. So again, thank you for this compiled list of these bridge options. I think it'll be very um, helpful and informative for residents. 
And again, this was something we talked about at the January 28th meeting that we would pull together. So thank you for that. <laughs> Anybody on the board have any comments regarding the, um, the bridge options? Any comments? Kathy, I just have one general comment. I did receive an email from Rita Purvis, um, who in my mind is, is a subject matter expert um, with uh, this field because she's worked in it for so many years. And I spoke to her today just to get an idea of what we have as infrastructure in here, um, what's compatible and her general consensus on what's the uh, best way to go or what is an option to go. I really think, and she availed herself to helping. Um, right. So I think we really should uh, somehow dovetail her into this process uh, where we can tap into her vast knowledge. I by no means am a subject matter expert on any of this. And I appreciate everything that the ad hoc committee is doing and present bringing this to light to the board members and residents. But I think uh, Rita would be uh, a, a great addition to this process. Yeah, that's a very, that's a very valid um, point. And when we solicited for volunteers, December 3rd, the, the board voted to stand up the ad hoc committee. We had four uh, residents volunteer to assist. And at the last board meeting, Rita's name came up as um, a candidate or a uh, possible committee member. So Al's prepared now, Al, to uh, motion to include Rita on the um, ad hoc committee. Yes, absolutely. I would like to propose a motion that uh, we add Rita Purvis to the uh, ADCOM uh, ad hoc committee. I'd like to second that motion. Okay, John seconds. Thank you. Any further discussion? Just thank you, Rita. All right, and we'll vote. All in favor? Say aye. 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 All, anyone? Anyone opposed? All right, the motion passes. Rita and Purvis, I, welcome and thank I, you. I did speak with Rita and she said she would accept the nomination. All right, super, thank you. Thank you. And um, it's, it'll be very helpful. All right, so next let's talk about the, um, let's talk about the, um, bulk bundle service providers and some long-term strategy now. Um, what are we gonna do as far as the um, replacement for TV? Um, who are the vendors, more importantly, who are the vendors that offer bulk packages? Um, in our preliminary discussions, Steve and Al um, are aware that in um, with some of these service providers, it must be 100% of the community that signs on. Typically there's a base cost and the base cost for that bulk package, internet at 100 and um, TV offerings. It was a mid range of like $70 a month. That was what was referenced in the survey. There's also contract terms. Um, there's also potential escalations and that four to four and a half percent across the board is an industry standard. This is information now that we um, collected in the proposals and the preliminary discussions with these companies. So I'll turn it over to Al and Steve. Want to go ahead, Steve? Oh, <clears throat> okay. <laughs> My turn again. Thank you. You're welcome. So uh, we have the following options for bulk TV and internet that at least are on the, on the radar right now. And that is we can maintain the CenturyLink existing fiber connection for our internet services. Then they've teamed up with a company called Adcom, which is a direct TV partner, uh, direct TV being part of the AT&T family of companies uh, to put some satellite dishes here on the property and, uh, some equipment that would then deliver their signal through uh, the CenturyLink fiber optics to uh, each of our homes. We'd have uh, equipment changes on the outside of our, or inside of our homes. We're not sure exactly how that's gonna work yet. Uh, the second one would be Comcast uh, First Services. They currently have four 
four nodes, fiber uh, connected nodes here on the property. And uh, if we can get this board resolution uh, signed off, then we can get more detailed engineering information on the inevitable high speed and television and access uh, capabilities of that system. Right now, they've told me that it's it's actually quite good and that we can, as a minimum, get a 200 megabit connection for uh, on a bulk level, uh, not too much more per month. Then on a more complex level, we have two vendors. One is called Summit Fiber uh, and Blue Stream Fiber. You've probably seen the advertisements for Blue Stream. Uh, they primarily serve the hotel motel industry as well as high-rise condos but they're launching off into a more aggressive uh, capture of subdivisions like ours but it actually requires of course that they they push new fiber throughout the entire uh, sandoval subdivision which is quite a laborious effort it takes about eight months uh, on a you know good weather day to get all that fiber put in place. However, it does offer us some substantial uh, technological advancements uh, that we might find attractive. So again, we have a short-term solution uh, through CenturyLink and Adcom. Uh, that system would take about three months with contracts and equipment installations and so on, three to four months. Uh, we have a longer term solution with these fiber companies, Summit and Bluestream. Uh, and then we of course have a, a reasonably uh, quick installation situation as far as we can tell with our friends at Comcast. So those are the four that we're currently looking closely at to determine uh, what kind of RFP we can issue to them to get some more really uh, firm pricing and uh, do the best we can for the community. And as you know, if you read the, the community bylaws, there are no, is, there's no requirement that we provide bulk services. So that also becomes an option is to just let the internet come in via CenturyLink or other, and uh, everybody's on their own, which uh, you heard some of the comments made today that, uh, some people would just soon have the internet and hopefully get it as fast as they can and then go on to their own streaming services. So let's see how the next few months go. We'll give everybody as much help as we can to bridge this gap while we do the really uh, down and dirty due diligence to find out what the best options are for the community. And Steve, Steve, I, I just want to mention Hotwire. Hotwire does also provide a service. Maybe you can just address that. They're, they're sort of on the back burner at this time, right? Right. They're, they're, uh, they're essentially equivalent to our Summit and Blue Stream. Uh, they typically, again, will go into high rises and large hotels and string a backbone and fiber and equipment and so on. Uh, they had a long presentation that they gave to us and uh, they are currently talking to Comcast about utilizing their fiber optic system. And all I can tell you is that they've had a couple of discussions with them, but I haven't gotten any specific feedback to the ad hoc committee that they're prepared to uh, make an offer, but we'll see as we move forward with the RFPs, what, how that materializes. Okay. Um, any of the board members have a question for Steve on these um, these options? Steve, I have a question. Go ahead, uh, regarding um, the people who have just preliminarily um, voiced some interest, would you say that the vast majority of them or the majority of them want you to commit to a long-term agreement to secure any type of infrastructure that they put in the neighborhood? Uh, the answer to your question is yes. They all have standard boilerplate 
a, a ten-year contract, with the exception of uh, some little idiosyncrasies. They'll have a ten-year contract, but they'll have a uh, uh, like a five-year technical refresh. They'll have uh, maybe a uh, technical upgrade every year. They'll give you another hundred megabit of uh, internet speed. Uh, and uh, in Comcast, what they do, they have a seven-year contract with a five-year update that actually includes a, a new door fee. Not quite sure how that's going to work, but uh, theirs is the, the least number of years uh, for a contract. And would you say that, um, that they all include some sort of annual creep or cost increase? Yes, everybody is uh, has a minimum of a four percent cap. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, those are those are the industry standards. Um, again, in their in their um, contracts, and then you'd go into negotiations and try to work something out. Um, regarding the price, the terms of the contract, the escalation fees, all of that. Um, and all of that work has to still has to be done. So as Ron said earlier, no one was prepared to make any type of vote tonight on moving forward as far as Comcast or any other vendor. Um, anybody else have comments on the board? Any, any other comments on the um, document? I just have a question. Steve, is there a is there a difference in the fiber between Summit and Bluestream? Is it the same type of fiber that's going in? It looks like there's a little bit more detail with the Summit fiber one, and I just don't understand what what that is. The 72 hour playback and the the numbers, the sizes there. Yeah, that that doesn't really well. It does have something to do with the fiber in that they have. Uh, a bi-directional fiber proposal where like for instance summit is thinking that they can get up to a gig by a gig up down which is significant uh they also have i don't know what whether you consider it the latest but it is a leading edge technology techn uh, technology that provides uh their interfaces to the various televisions in the home. And uh, it's called IPTV. The fiber itself, uh, I don't know whether it's single mode or multi mode or a com complex arrangement of, of uh, hubs and equipment uh, that they haven't really shared any of that with us at this point. That answers your question. Yes, thank you. Steve, are you able to tell us what the best type of uh, technology moving forward would be in terms of um, whether it's fiber optic or, or, or another type of service that I'm, I'm not aware of? Well, the answer to that question is we will at some point. Uh, so much of this is, is you know, uh, at a 100,000 foot level in terms of their overall uh, proposals and slideshows and everything that they provided us so far, that uh, as an engineer, I always wanna, you know, draw me out a block diagram. How does this work? You know, how many, where does the equipment go? What's inside the house? What's outside the house? Uh, where are your uh, connection points and so on? And that kind of information uh, we would request in an RFP. Thank you. Yep. And for the community and um, the request for proposal, the RFP, that's where um, the ad hoc committee would document some of the requirements, uh, technical specifications, provide them with background information, you know, 1425 units. We want a minimum of four boxes or voice remote controls. We would lay out options and then see what they come in with as far as um, a 
starting document, which would be a form of a contract, and then their terms, such as um, the um, escalation costs, as well as the um, the contract terms, how many years, and this would then lead to further board comparative analysis by the ad hoc committee and then a recommendation to the board. Similar to the process that Melanie coordinated with the um, RFP for the property management company. Any board comments on that process? Is that something that we're looking to do? Again, the time factor, I'm not sure. Um, we said at the board meeting on the 28th, Ron, you said it, that you know we need to further explore this. We wanna be forward leaning and we may have to work through this to try to get the best solution for the, for the community. Well, I think if we're discussing long-term commitments, we need to make sure we're positioned for the future and have a full understanding of what we're getting and what we're giving up. Um, and I don't think we should be making a quick decision there. I think we should make sure that we understand all the details and any obligation we're getting in. And part of that is understanding new technology. Um, and I'm hoping that the uh, committee will help us, help educate us and help educate the community. Also, I would like to see if we could um, take another uh, step to help the community in terms of a little more education when it came to the streaming options to literally maybe pull up a, um, pull up a, uh, whether it's an iPad screen or something, and just to walk residents through to show them what the different streaming options look like, how they'd sign up, basically give them some, some more insight, because I know a lot of people have a lot of questions out there and are going to be a bit disheartened when they go dark, and it looks like that's going to happen. Yes. Yeah. And I think... Um, with with Vic's assistance, you know, we these meetings are doable without Vic um, Vic support from the um, live streaming standpoint. Vic, that's something that maybe you can help us with. Oh, I don't know if he can hear us. Um, yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay. All right, but that's something you can help us with, right? Yeah, we we can help you. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, we can have we can have some. Uh, two different like things. tutorials. We talked yeah, about we can tutorials. Have a, live, we can have a live seminar. That way people can key in questions, maybe. Or we can get uh, uh, a video made that describes these various options. It gives you some screenshots and walks people through the steps. Right. All right. That's good. Yeah. We'll help anywhere any we can. Any other um, comments from the board? No, I just think that, you know, we're all going to have the, we're pretty much going to be forced to have to do some of the streaming and getting that level of education might change some perceptions around whether we should even entertain having a cable option once people get more comfortable in there. Um, I think by the time we're able to collect that information and do the RFPs and the due diligence that we need, by that point, we would have probably had um, more exposure to the streaming and might have a difference of opinion at that point. I, I, um, I, just, like to, I just like to add, I just noticed a comment about the rationale of investigation of a long-term contract. As it was explained to us earlier, every service provider currently is demanding a long-term contract. My statement earlier um, was basically saying that prior to entering into any long-term contract, we need a robust investigation of what they're providing, what we're giving up, and I'm not by any means saying that we should enter a long-term contract. I'm emphasizing that we need to make sure we do our due diligence and do not rush into anything. And I, just to jump in there too, I think you know the, the option still remains, is any contract a valid you know, decision point? I think we need all that information before we can even say, we're going to go into a long-term contract with any of these providers. We still have the option of residents are on their own. They they just do whatever they choose to. Of course, fiber is going to be challenging. Nobody's going to come and do fiber for just your house. So it's going to limit options. It's um, it, it's still just a lot of information that needs to be determined before we determine wh where we're going to go with it. 
And with and that seek for the information, um, our, the RFP. Would you agree, Melanie? Would be the right process, the next step. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And then we're 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 in the driver's seat when it comes to the RFP. We can, Ron. We can stipulate uh, what we feel based on on what we learn and you know looking at the industry. Uh, if we want a five year term with a technical refish. Uh, a technical refresh at say three years or a hundred megabits a year, whatever it is. Uh, if they can meet it, they'll put it in the RFP. If they say no, our you know ten year contract is all we give, or okay, fine, we'll do five years, but it's going to cost you another twenty percent. You know because you're not yeah. making a long term investment. Mm -hmm. So we'll find those things out. Sure, it's certainly not ideal to be able to uh, be in a contract that's 10 years that they can get out of in five, we've obviously experienced that. Um, and uh, technology is obviously changing so quickly. Um, it certainly doesn't seem like it's in the interest of the community, but I guess we'll uh, we'll discuss that further. Yeah, but, but what, what's really important is that we have dependable internet. And um, Al, why don't you talk a little bit about um, CenturyLink, the current setup with CenturyLink. I think everybody knows that they're offering the current level of service is 40 MPBs. And the concern then is with streaming and whatnot, we need a dependable service and we don't wanna lose our internet um, capabilities. So we were hit, the ad hoc committee and Al have been having discussions with CenturyLink about the possibility of upgrading the um the speed right Al? yeah yes we we did get a reply back uh it took several emails but uh we got a reply back uh for uh, a, a price on it currently we're at 40 megabits per second uh we asked you know what is available uh the available speeds are 100 200 500 and a gigabyte and uh, we we currently have prices for all of those. So depending on on uh, and and a couple of them are free. Uh, the lower ones, uh, depending on what this community wants, uh, you know, we can we can go 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 up to a gigabit. But uh, basically, uh, right now, our only option uh, for internet only is CenturyLink internet. Uh, the other company that we that we could get standalone internet is uh, Bluestream. Uh, they're quite a bit more expensive. And of course, they would have to put down fiber, fiber in the entire community. All right. It was really important for, for um, Casey to read the comments from the community and that you know, with every board meeting agenda, we the residents are provided the opportunity to comment, uh, provided that their comments are received by noon the day of the meeting. So I know some of that was um, du duplicative, but it was important. We got the message, we heard, we realized that there was misinformation that there were some alarmists out there that we were voting on Comcast tonight. None of that was planned. This is a follow-up to the board meeting on the 28th where we said we would have a 48 hour notice meeting. Um, so um, I know that there's been a lot of information shared tonight, but I, if, I, if, we're, if we're done with the vendor matrix, I'd like to just talk a little bit about the CenturyLink equipment plan and we can share this information tomorrow as well. Casey, are you still there? Yes, I am. Okay, great. So with this, um, we have not set up a hard date yet, but CenturyLink has uh, provided Casey with information, the frequently asked questions that they would be, um, what they're suggesting is they will send a receptacle out to collect uh, PRISM TV um, equipment, basically the DVR, the STV, and um, your remotes. 
So that's information we'll be sharing with the community as well. Of course, nobody has to take any action till after March 31st when PRISM is terminated. Hey, so I don't know if you want to say anything further on that. No, just that Central, we've just reached out, finding out what their plan would be as far as the overall equipment and due to the size of our community and what they've done with other large properties is that they coordinate to have a trailer of sorts delivered. I know this was asked um, in the last board meeting um, on site where um, residents can drop off their boxes on designated days rather than um, the smaller going to a destination is, is what they said for our community. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I'll open the floor up to board members. If, if, there, if anybody wants to comment further on any of the points we discussed. Nobody? All right. So, um, Hey, Kathy, uh, can I just ask, is there any plan to increase our internet speed? Uh, because if residents are going to be using a lot of streaming services, it's really going to tax the internet, obviously. Um, do we have some sort of stopgap to plan for that? Because uh, our speeds are currently pretty low. Yeah, Al? Well, you know, our... Our, I would say the committee's suggestion is is to uh, continue on with CenturyLink Internet, of course, and uh, you know we do have the the opportunity to increase it. We we know, you know they've made they've made an offer to us, and, and uh, if we choose to accept it, we can do that. However, uh, we have four years left on our on our current contract. Uh, they would they would uh, give us the, the uh, faster speeds if we would go with a 10 year contract, which which actually only amounts to six years because uh, we st we still are locked into four years. But we can you know we can certainly do that if, if, if that's what the you know board would like to do. Well, I would like um, prior to doing anything to get a committee recommendation. Um, because that could impact our ability to negotiate um, a door fee for um, other providers, number one, um, and also impact the overall price by piecemealing it through two companies. Um, is there any other temporary solution that, that we can come up with that doesn't include signing or extending the contract maybe pay a small increased fee, something along the lines to just make sure this community has a reliable um, internet provider that can handle all the increased streaming. I am you know, I'm sure that could probably be negotiated somehow, but uh, you know, we also have uh, uh, legal issues with CenturyLink that need to be taken care of. Yeah. Well, I would emphasize um, that making any um, changes to the current contract could obviously have an impact on that. And that needs to be vetted first through legal. Um, but we do need to focus on making sure this community has reliable internet and um, that's gonna be uh, increasingly taxed come the end of March. So I think that should be front and center. Um, priority number one, because we are all completely reliant, especially during this uh, pandemic, unfortunately, on internet. Absolutely. Al, I got a quick, quick, quick question for you, Al. Or at least um, I know that somebody in the community, after speaking with that person today, called CenturyLink and got, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, an upgrade to a uh, 100 Mbps at no extra charge from the 4020. Um, so I think that needs to be something that we need to investigate if they've set that precedence, at least at 100 at no charge. Maybe that's their benchmark now when we're we are receiving an inferior um, download upload speed where we can get the hundred for free like this person did um, that I spoke to today. Yes, I know I know who you spoke to, and uh, uh, you know they 
the offer that they gave us was uh, they could give us 200 megabits, uh, but that, that requires signing a contract. Okay, thank you. So right. do, and, do they need just 1,400 people to call them individually and request the 100? <laughs> like that, that just seems kind of crazy if they're not willing to. Well, and to make matters even more confusing, uh, I've been on 100 megabit for since I started with CenturyLink and I pay $15 a month. I don't see them lowering that cost. It came in as $15 on my last bill. Uh, I've asked for an increased speed over 100 and they have told me that at least in phase three, they cannot provide that. There's something technologically uh, inferior in terms of their system distribution. Now I know Mr. Tubbs, uh, I think has gigabit at his home. Uh, the story is that he's closer to the gate. Well, that could be, but uh, that, that makes me very curious about the technical ramifications of our friendly century link. All right. All right, so let's go back to this Comcast right. resolution. I have a gigabit, but a neighbor of mine who goes down cannot get it. So I, I don't know how they go about that. Yeah, that's, I, I was shocked, but it'd be interesting to see. Thanks. Well, we can all, all connect to Mr. Tubbs. <laughs> You're so, the hub now. Let's go back to the Comcast document, the resolution where they acknowledge their formal partnership at a corporate level with um, First Service. And Steve, why don't you talk a little bit about Comcast, um, their desire to get in here and do an assessment, send their engineers in. But again, this document is stopping them from giving us additional information, proposals, moving forward. Yeah, they, there, are, there are basically two issues that that document helps clear the way for. The first one is <clears throat> getting a model contract so that you, you could take a close look at what that contract looks like. And then two, getting the engineers uh, out here on the ground to double check some of the things on their system maps and then have a better idea of how they can answer the RFP when it comes down the street. I have, I have uh, uh, some real uh, concerns about uh, door fee, especially uh, when the uh, property management company should be uh, working in our favor. And it seems to me that this document, its main thrust is to ensure that uh, First service, if a contract signed, would get their percentage, and I, I just don't think that the, if they're getting a percentage, how they can be representing us as a property management company with full interest in our interest, rather than in their interest to get the, a significant uh, kickback uh, on a contract. I, I and if you and if you need to have a door fee in order to sell your product, it makes me really question. Uh, why would you need that if you have a superior product? Well, uh, door it's, fees, it's not, door fees are an industry standard. The other service providers that um, Steve talked about, they too offer door fees. However, First Service was clear in stating that the only corporate partnership they have or national partnership is with Comcast. So they do not have anything in place with Bluestream, Summit, Hotwire, um, or CenturyLink. But Bluestream offers a door fee, as does, um, who else? Um, help Stream. me here, Steve. It's, it's, it's just Bluestream and- Oh, it's, I um, see, for their, for their bulk internet and then their bulk internet and TV package. Okay, I misspoke. I yes, thought there sir. were two others. It's just the one, whether it's the bulk or the bulk and TV, they uh, offer a door fee. Yeah, and, and I was uh, just real quick. <clears throat> uh, uh, let, me, let me jump in real quick. The, the story is, I mean, 
I don't know if it's true or not, but Dominic, who administers that contract, they have negotiated this $165 door fee. It's normally $100 or less if you're like if we were just to go out and do this on our own without any involvement from first services. Mm -hmm. Whether that's true or not, I don't know, but that's exactly what they told us. So they're well, 25% each week. Yeah, that was sort of wanted to ask, and and John is, is interesting, but um, I wanted to see we don't have we're not forced to go through first service if we want Comcast. There, there's nothing that's saying we can only get or we can only get Comcast if we go through first service. It's just that they have this bulk agreement that we tend to get a reduced cost, right? Like, are we? Yes. Can, will Comcast not work with us if we don't go through first service? No. So the, the kickback piece just seems um, just flat out wrong. You know, I just it's it sounds like it's something that's um, an inside deal or something like that. It's it's no. really not. And you have the option of going outside of first service. You lose the benefit right. of getting the discount with first service if that's the case. So right. you will, just you want to be really get, careful with some of the wording and the language that we're using. I personally, I don't have any into any of these. I think there's a lot more information, but I don't want to make it seem like there's some sort of benefit that first service is getting from us or that we're siding with them. You know, like Kathy had mentioned earlier, it's a it's a benefit when you have a big property management company that has buying power and can give you a discount. Um, kickback that lit literally that term just seems um interesting that, given the that 45 minutes that we spent the small you know at the beginning of well, this call well the way right. they explain it too is that uh comcast has I, set I this, this particular uh account as a uh, uh a win back and so they're they're trying to incentivize us to look closely at them so that they can win back that service and expand their customer base in this area. If if we negotiate on our own, uh, and and if we do not use first service, instead of getting the one sixty five per door, if we get the one hundred dollars per door, uh, we would be missing out on approximately thirty four thousand dollars. Uh, we we gain that thirty four thousand dollars if first service does the negotiations for us. If we if we use the pre negotiated contract, uh, and I believe I believe that you would be paying taxes on uh, that particular money, which would make uh, the thirty percent tax pretty much take care of your thirty thousand dollars. So uh, I don't I know that uh, we've explored what the uh, tax ramifications are of this, of this money that you would be getting as quote as a door fee. Could you explain that further? You're saying that we're going to pay taxes on part of the fee that we're, we would be paying for service and that would wipe out any net gain. I think that, I think that that would be taxes due on uh, door fees received by the HOA. I don't know how that would affect the portion that went back to, uh, for service, but I think you would be paying taxes on the portion that you had for sure. Well, shouldn't shouldn't first service know that? Shouldn't that answer be pretty easy to come by? Yeah, we'll have to go back to um to uh, Dominic. You know, I'm sure this isn't the first contract they've negotiated, so first I think service you're correct, should Tom. know that. Mm -hmm. That's something we can um we can go back. To um, Dominic on or Eric. Also, with the um, first service arrangement, the partnership, they also with um, Comcast, you have a corporate um, project manager, whatever portfolio uh, manager. He's a dedicated um, they, person. They have dedicated personnel to resolve our community issues, our outages. We have des you know we get priority when there's um, concerns, a designated number. Um, because again, first service rolls these out in bulk, um, these partnerships across the country, and they have this 
formal arrangement. And it's the so 25% is like a negotiating fee, a consultant fee, a professional fee. Um, in some instances, I heard from some of the community residents that when they were at their condo in New York or their condo someplace else, that um, they paid as much as 30% back to the um, consultant that they hired to um, negotiate a bulk rate with um, this bulk with the service provider for internet and TV. So it is what it is. I'm not saying we should do it. I'm just throwing it out there. Um, if we put out the RFP and um, Comcast opts not to or feels they, they, they aren't able to respond, it is what it is, Steve, right? Yeah. I have one more comment that I'd like to make if I could. Yes, please. Okay, uh, I think that if you would consider uh, everyone getting their own TV service on their own, uh, our uh, Snowbird residents, which is approximately, I, I assume, about 40% of the community, uh, they can pause those, uh, those streaming fees for the month that they're not here, and, or they could use the same streaming fees in both locations. So from that point of view, uh, the amount of money that would be saved by certain residents would be significant. And I think that's something that we should also take into consideration. I also would say that if we do the sense internet only, uh, we would then not be faced with uh, how we were going to uh, fund uh, the uh, the bulk portion of the uh, the uh, TV portion of the uh, of the package going forward. Uh, we would our, our community would be fiduciarily uh, uh, sound and uh, there would not be a, a deficit uh, for the rest of this year or there would not be an increase in fees going forward. That being said, I think that, you know, it would certainly be understandable that that particular line item should be uh, reduced uh, for everyone's HOA fees so it would help them purchase the streaming package that they would want. And, and I'm not really sure that the, these uh, cable companies, you know, three or four years down the road are, are still going to be existing either. So uh, I think right. we have an opportunity now to possibly think about, you know, going more modern in technology, provide a strong Internet and allow the community to, and each individual resident to determine uh, what type of streaming they would like to do or what, uh, and, and pick their own package. And that's that's just my comment on that. Yeah, I think it'll be helpful again tomorrow when we get this information out and then um, working with the committee and Vic to get some tutorials um, and then see who in the community would be willing to help residents that need assistance setting up or showing them. Um, I think that would be really helpful. A number of the streaming services do have the um, trial packages for like a two week trial. They can play with it now before we go dark on the 31st. Um, it'll be interesting to see how CenturyLink adjusts the billing at the end of, uh, well, at the end of the March 31st timeframe. Well, we should certainly have an expectation in mind and make sure it meets our expectations. Yeah, we'll have to um, follow up with a call. And I, I do know that a uh, residents raised concern, apparently um, the um, landline, the phone, hardline phones were part of the internet or part of the CenturyLink package. From what we understand, the hardline phone, if you currently have it or are utilizing it, it's not going away. It's simply the Prism TV that's being terminated right. at this time. So I just wanted to clarify that it, it didn't come up in Casey's comments, but I know that um, there were questions about that that um, I saw. All right, so at this point, regarding the resolution, is there any motion or any um, any thoughts moving forward? Well, I'd like to know the recommendation of the committee. I would like to know if it puts us in a better yeah. position. Yeah. And I'd like to know like if to it- um, I would like to move. Okay, I'm sorry, you were talking over each other. Let's um, let Ron go first and then Bill, I'm sorry, you follow up. Well, I'd like to know the recommendation of the committee. Um, I would like to know if this limits our ability to deal with Comcast directly. 
Um, and uh, I want to have absolute confidence from the committee that um, if we were to proceed with this um, with this agreement, that would put us in a better position for the community. Bill? Oh. And that's directed to the committee. I've got about a Steve, six second delay trying back? to listen on YouTube because I, my uh, stream is freezing and I did hear about every third word. So that's causing it hard for me to get in. <clears throat> did you have a question, Bill? On the resolution, Steve, did you hear Ron's? Yeah, I did. Okay. Well, and we you can take it back. To, you can take it back they, to the committee. Well, they they keep uh, trying to make me an attorney and an accountant, but I'm not going to be <laughs> either. Uh, there's nothing that I can see that is detrimental in that agreement and it does give the committee a, uh, another leg up with comcast to get their engineers and everybody else engaged uh, without it because first services has got this agreement this nationwide agreement uh, they need that document in order to, to proceed and to give us the best value And it would just be an option out there because frankly, as I've said before, um, I'm, I'm leaning away from GOAX. Comcast has some customer right. service issues, um, but we want to present the community with all the options so we can make a well-informed decision. And uh, sure. frankly, I don't think it'll be Comcast, but uh, again, we would like to present the community with all options. Ron, what is your opinion on the resolution? Well, I want to make sure I understand. You made a very important comment to me, at least, Al, that um, that the value we're getting going through first service is a net benefit to the community, that we would do better going that route than we would directly. And as long well, as there's confidence in that. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's of course, that's according to the first service. You know, we didn't, we haven't heard that from Comcast because we haven't negotiated with them. But, uh, you know, the, the first service uh, person that we spoke to, this uh, Dominic, uh, he's, the, he's the one that said, if you go through us, you will get $165 door fee. If you do not go through us, as far as I know, the maximum you get would be $100. So that's, that, that's all we know at this point. That did not come from Comcast. Well, before I could agree to proceed, I would want independent verification from a non-interested uh, party or directly from Comcast. But I, I appreciate you explaining in great detail everything that we know, and it puts us in a better position to make a decision. But um, at this point, based on that information, I could not in good yeah. conscience move forward with the agreement until I knew it was a net benefit to Sandoval. Well, we had we had one committee member that was in uh, good contact with Comcast. Uh, you know, we started we started to uh, we started talks with Comcast, and then once that Comcast saw that we were involved with uh, First Services, they said, "Well, forget this. We'll we'll go with the First Services uh, contract." And uh, but we can certainly go back to that original person, uh, Tom Naffel was, was the, was the committee. Make sure that we have uh, full disclosure. We have all our options laid out and a full understanding of what benefits we would be getting going through for a service. And I wanna absolutely ensure it's a net benefit to the community. So at the end, we can say thank you. I appreciate your opinion. Yeah, that's good. All right, so as far as the resolution, we'll table that until, um, Al, do you think it's feasible to have um, a better response for the um, by the April or not? I'm sorry, by the February board meeting. 
February 24th, I think it is. <laughs> and that's just my yeah. opinion. Uh, I don't mean to hijack, <laughs> hijack this. No, 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 no. But I think we just have to do some further exploration. Yeah, we'll, we'll look at it. On, on the resolution aspect, February yeah. 25th, this is the board meeting. It, it, I would imagine it should come back, but you never know. It, you know yeah, I, I understand. Happen as quickly as you'd hope. And I know Bill wanted to say something, but he was having some technical difficulties. So, I'm at, Bill, are you back? No, okay. Melanie, did you want to say something? I thought I heard you. Did we lose no, anybody? No, I'm fine. Nope, I'm good. <laughs> All right, and Scott and Don, anything further? No, I'm, I'm fine, thank you. And, and I'm good. Okay, Don, thank you. And all right. And another thing, once once we get Rita on the committee, uh, who knows, we might have a lot more things to talk about. Right, 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 right. And thank so, you, Al. Thank you, Steve. No, very, oh. very helpful information. Hope it's okay. We're, we'll keep moving forward. We greatly appreciate it. Yes, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. No problem. All right, so um, before we adjourn, I want to um, solicit any additional agenda items. Um, well, uh, we have a um, an insurance um, discussion we need to have tonight on an emergency basis. Um, yes. I'm not sure if that's what you're alluding to, but yes. Um, yes. And this needs to take place on this uh, at this meeting. Yeah, I think we lost Bill though. He was prepared to address it. So, um, Casey, are you with us? I am. I was gonna say, do you want me to call Bill? Um, yeah, if you can. He was saying that he was, it was um, breaking up on him and whatnot. But basically um, the insurance premium today, um, there was discussion with um, the insurance company and a quote was received today and um, we have six days to act upon it. Um, actions needed by February 22nd. And I can give you a, a brief overview. Basically our insurance uh, coverage has significantly increased under this quote and we are now coming in um, under $40,000 under budget, which is great news. Um, this committee has worked very, very hard to get the best possible rate and to make sure that we have covered all the gaps to make sure that we are fully insured. Um, we have a, a couple residents in this community, Craig Snyder, uh, Dave Nermo, uh, that have put a lot of work into this to make sure that we um, have the best coverage at the best price. Um, but our insurance is needs to be renewed um, by next Monday. And that is why I present this on an emergency basis um, because we need to make a board decision on whether we can accept the current quote and proceed. Yeah. But it is so a recommendation of the committee to accept the quote and proceed. Yeah, the committee was, committee was clear that there was increased coverage um, with better rates. Um, I know Bill was prepared to discuss this so yeah just basically we uh, better coverage in all areas more uh of the property covered as amenities and such um coverage so better coverage in all areas and then um for a better rate and again yes absolutely and it's not for their lack of uh working on this for quite some time but working with the agents they come in um last minute sometimes on purpose so uh, they've been working very hard getting quotes for the insurance and um i think the if there is going to be a motion on that which we would need which we recommend and we need that this evening it would be to go with the um the current uh, quote from the agent that's our current carrier for the dno policy and um not any other quote that we've received 
And I would just emphasize too, this hasn't been a last minute quote. Um, this insurance committee has been working for the last uh, six months, frankly, working very diligently. And some of the areas that they firmed up is doing a complete risk assessment to the community. They put a lot of time into this, doing a full analysis of our current insurance needs um, to make sure that um, this future policy will cover and meet our needs. And then obviously we focused in on price um, it's difficult to get true insurance quotes months months in advance, frankly. Um, so we have been meeting regularly recently to make sure that we get the most up to date and uh, the best possible quote. And uh, again, they've worked very hard on it, and I appreciate it. I think it's important to recognize that the agent that you're working with is a new agent. Uh, who helped with the DNO policy, not any of the agents that we were working with last year. And, and one of the big significant findings was that we had a lot of amenities that were not covered with liability insurance other than the pool. And uh, now all the amenities here will be covered. And I think that's a tremendous improvement and reduce our liability risk substantially. So uh, I, I think, uh, you know, it's, it's a great move. And I think, uh, uh, they're to be commended on all the hard work. And thank you, John. And we have Ron, uh, Bill back with us. Bill? Yeah, I'm back on. Uh, one thing you need to know that currently we're paying $177,000 a year for our current coverage, and that does not have any excess uh, liability coverage. Uh, what we've negotiated, uh, it will be $138,000 uh, for, for coverage better than what we have now. And then for 22,000 additional, we can add $5 million of excess liability coverage, which means we'll come in at 160,000 total, which is still a 17 or 18,000 dollar per year savings over what we're paying right now. And what about our current budget? Where do we fall in line with our current budget? Current budget, we have 176,000 for general liability and about another eight or 9,000 for the other lines. So we're at 185,000. So we'll be coming in $25,000 under budget for year end okay. for this policy. Because I conveyed it was 40,000. So that's not including the uh, 5 million additional. That's correct. correct. Yeah, that's yeah, and I have the exact amount here to be paid at 163, 191, 90. Bill, wasn't our uh, insurance premiums go down? No, our insurance premiums were expected to go up 15 to 20 percent. Well, I, I, I think there's... I thought they yeah. ballooned and then they were supposed to slowly go back to where they were before we had that large increase. That's incorrect. I, I think it is. Uh, I don't think it's incorrect, frankly. I think we're dealing with two things here. Unfortunately, insurance rates across Florida have uh, been dramatically increasing. So we're dealing with, on one end, um, dealing with an increase in overall rates based on everyone else in the uh, state of Florida. But in terms of the impact of claims, Yes, we do have an expectation that rates will go down because we um, are in a very good position now compared to where we were in the previous years in terms of claims. So, um, Al, you are correct. I believe that um, in terms of our expectations of our individual rate going down, yes, that's accurate. I hope that makes sense because you're dealing with two different items here. Yes. Well, that, you're right. As, as the claims came off the loss run, that would help. but the quote that we had from our previous the broker that sold us the policy we had now was 168,000 for general liability uh, so that did not have the 22,000 for the 5 million excess liability coverage uh, and the other things were going up as well so we would have we would have been about the 175 to 180,000 uh, expenditure this year if we'd stayed with the broker that we had for the year 2020. All right. Is there a motion? I move that we uh, uh, execute these I'm uh, only able to policies and, and move on. ahead. I cannot hear Bill. Oh, Bill, you're 
You can't. Okay, John, you just said you can't hear. I can hear you and I can hear Ron. I could not hear Bill and I could not hear Al. Um, if it helps, Don, I could um, basically paraphrase just to get us through this. Um, yeah. Um, Al asked, uh, well, he said that he, he, he thought the expectation was that the um, rates would go down because of the lack of claims. And that's why I tried to answer it in a way that um, addresses both the overall macro increase and then specifically our rate decrease due to the lack of the claims. Um, so that's why I went in that direction. Um, okay. And um, does that make sense? Yeah, and I think that's true because I think the liability policy did go down. But in looking at the first service contract, they, there was some uh, umbrella policies and things and workman's compensation that we had never had in the past. And they're added to it, which raised your cost to the 161. So, so I, 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 I think that uh, the answer for Al is yes, the liability portion did go down, but we have added other uh, coverage that uh, is in the first service contract that we didn't have. No, Don. That, that, no, Don. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Uh, the, the general general liability policy was 155000 in 2020. It was going to 160000 2021. So that is an increase. And you're referring to our old policy, not the new one, correct? That is correct. If we just renewed the old policy, it was going to be 168,000 for general liability by itself. But that was the quote, frankly, and uh, we're able to shop around now, thanks to uh, the help from Craig and Dave um, and the um, lack of claims. Uh, has a significant impact on our be able to uh, negotiate a um, a lower rate, frankly. That's that is true. Well, I'd like to make a motion that we approve this uh, this new policies and uh, uh, proceed with uh, with getting them back. I second that. Okay, Ron seconds. Okay. So the motion that, that um, was tabled was to uh, move forward with approval. Ron seconded it. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm in favor. I'm in favor. I'm Opposed? Okay, the motion passes. Thank you all very much. And again, this was handled under the emergency um, clause of the bylaws so that we can um, expeditiously handle this. Casey, are you good? <laughs> I am good. All right. All right. Is there a motion to adjourn? I so move. All right. That was Al, was it? Yes. Can't tell voices. Al motions to adjourn. Is there a second? I'll second that. All right, Scott, very good. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night, everyone.